Take, for example, the honeybee, Apis mellifera. We tend to think of them as hard-working honey makers. Their sole purpose to provide us with a perfect accompaniment for toast. The trouble starts when they appear in places you don't expect them. For the honeybee, the sting is its own death sentence, which is no consolation for the person being stung. But it's amazing how so many bees are prepared to lay down their lives for the protection of their queen. The sting is unpleasant, but not the worst thing ever. It's the sheer volume that hurts. Wasps, Vespula vulgaris, have narrower hips and more distinct colors. They move around in much smaller gangs. Drawn by sweet-smelling things, a wasp is never welcome. The wasp's sting is more powerful, and unlike bees, it can do it again, and again, and again. Then, waiting for an unwary rambler, there's the hornet, Vesper Crabro, the queen of them all. A creature you don't want to meet on a dark night, or even on a well-lit day. Everything upsets a hornet. And you certainly don't want to stir up this nest. All these guys produce a venom called apitoxin. Even when the sting is broken off, it still pumps in the poison like a pneumatic drill. Then, just when things couldn't get much worse, the sting releases an alarm pheromone that alerts nearby stingers to arms. And there's more than a sting in the tail. There's a dangerous twist, anaphylactic shock. This is an extreme allergic reaction to a sting, and worldwide it kills 10,000 people a year. But the drive for the sweet stuff sees people all over the world recklessly disregarding the pain to get at the pleasure. In many places where food is hard to come by, something that's high energy, like honey, is irresistible liquid gold. The trouble is, people want more and more of it. To feed a growing demand for honey, the European honeybee was introduced to South America. It didn't particularly like the climate, and in 1956, Brazilian geneticist Warwick Kerr decided to set up breeding experiments. He wanted to cross the aggressive wild African bees with their mellower European relatives, thus getting the best of both worlds, a mild, high-quantity honey producer that could stand the heat. He had only 63 African queens to work with, but things got off to a good start. They flourished, and then disaster. Some helpful bloke removed the plugs keeping the queens in. This apiarist had unwittingly released 26 angry African queens into the wild. 